yesterday, Skip. I feel the amount of a hen dog, and now y'all got problems with me. Happy Monday, happy Monday, happy Monday, happy Monday, happy Monday. It's your boy Jumpman Jones. You're not allowed to sign episode one. Mm. Oh, hell. What? Wow. <laughs> trying to go back? Wow. Uh, you're now live inside episode 214 of the Kicking Shit Podcast. <laughs> Alright, now if y'all watching us on YouTube right now, to my right, to my right, you can see this man as he's looking at my screen. He's going to do it throughout the night to find a focus point. Nah, he's focusing on his phone right now. <laughs> it's lie. the funny it's the talented. It's Jean Picasso. Until your motherfucking super. You talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. It's Jelly. Keep going. I'm fucking AKA my intro, bro. It's Jelly, Keep AKA, AKA Jill. It's, Je- it's Jelly, AKA Jill. Put me on the bread till I'm fed. Yes, sir. It's your motherfucking super, James, the Jellyfish, man. What's going on? <laughs> No, you yeah. fucked up your intro but because I have ADHD. People, you fucked up your intro because I have ADHD. And, to, and behind the camera, it's, it's the beautiful, it's the talented, it's the lovely D providers with the visuals, yeah, man. What's going on, yo? Um, all right, Johnny's not here today. And real quick, I want to get to the business, man. Shout out to everybody who listens to the show week in and week out. Shout out to you, shout out to everybody who tuned in to episode 213. Listen, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and check us out on YouTube. If you're watching this right now on YouTube, like, comment. That helps the algorithms. Also, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Google Play. And that's it. That's all the platforms we're on. And you can visit us at kickishitpod.com for all things KSP. Get our bio. You can also email us there. You can hit us up if you want to talk to us. Uh, I think that's about it, man. Other than that, man, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing good, man. Get me off live. Good, man. Yeah, we, did. we had to, <laughs> we had to find something to be on live. Perform. You said, was, hey, you, you said, don't look at your screen. So he had to find something. Else he to had to find something, something yeah. to do. So Why is it every it. week we do this show? You have to find something to do. Cause man, Other you know, I'm show. just trying to help. It's so, it's us. it's something with the um. The t- to uh, what's it called? It's what's t- what, what what does THC mean? What, what's the T? <laughs> I'm done with this nigga, man. Culture, culture. Now, how y'all doing, though, man? Everybody good? Everybody Juneteenth was good? I was Juneteenth. Juneteenth, I had to work. Ain't that a bitch? Yeah, that's fucked up, man. You supposed to quit your job. And I got them. <laughs> they <laughs> gave us vanilla cake on Juneteenth. Damn. It was vanilla cake. They, they, they low-key wanted to give you some type of, like, swirl. I they, said, motherfucker, if y'all don't bring some, at least some chocolate ice cream out here so I can have with this motherfucker now, or something. Had they given you some chicken, fried chicken, you would have felt nah, I would have felt some type of way with the fried <laughs> With the fried chicken, all legs. I think somebody did get fried chicken at their job oh, that I know of. Up. Oh, they got some fucked up shit. Something, fucked somebody up. posted that they got chicken and watermelon slices, but I I think that's what I see. I don't believe somebody yeah, got I chicken like, and I need watermelon to see a slices. I don't believe that. Um, D, how was the Juneteenth, man? Juneteenth was straight. Went down to Atlanta, spent some time with cousins, so it was good. Good time. Oh, that's what's up. Um, I went and checked out the Juneteenth Fest in Plaza Midwood. I thought that was a do rag fest. No, no, no. no. I, I went there too, but I went to the Juneteenth Fest in Plaza Midwood. Now, I heard that's hosted by House of Africa. That was pretty dope. Um, nothing but African vendors. They had jewels, incense, sage at every vendor. And some funnel cakes. Yeah, <laughs> um, I ain't hit a nigga up. But it was, it was nice. It was nice. You was going to the sneaker thing. I did go to the And I told you what I was doing Saturday. Yo, first of all, (laughs) the sneaker convention was terrible. Well, he told you it was gonna be terrible. It was bad. It was it was real bad. First of all, we got I just don't understand how people don't marginalize style. How do you do that? How do you do that? Like all these motherfuckers is wearing is dunks, Jordans, and that's it. That, that's it, bro. Yeah, those are the most popular sneaker styles right now. All the Dunks, all the Jordans, maybe the Yeezys. I ain't even seen a nigga three. with a pair of Yeezys. You ain't seen nobody with the Yeezys? I ain't seen not one pair of Yeezys out there. I ain't seen not one pair of Air Force Ones out there. I'm not going to shit on niggas like I don't like the Dunks or the Jordans. I just, you know, the Dunks is the new craze. The Air Jordan Ones is the new craze. I mean, I've always loved those two shoes, but... I mean, Jordans are always going to be the number one shoe at any sneaker convention outside of like your Travis Scott, your Fragments, all that type shit. Let me tell you how, how old I am. 
as a nigga. So I'm, I'm I got my shoes thinking like, hell yeah, somebody gonna want these. I go out there. This dude seen me because I had on these pair of dunks that I like. You know the uh, dunks that I got like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, the red and black ones. So I had them on. So people was looking at me like, oh yeah, this nigga must got some heat. So they came up to me in line. Like I ain't even get into the convention yet. They was like, what you got? So, you know, I'm busting out my sneakers. I'm like, yo, I got these, these, and these. They like, oh, nah, nah, nah. Like, everybody I went to was like, nah. I was like, hold the fuck up. Damn First they, of all, yeah. I got yeah, sneakers in here that cost like hundreds. You know what I'm saying? And they was just like, nah, nah, nah. I was like, man, that's, that's some fuck shit, man. It really kind of made, it made me feel some type it of way. It hurt your feelings a little bit? It kind of did. They looking for, they looking <laughs> for specific did. things at sneaker, at sneaker shows. Like, they looking for specific collector items at sneaker shows. So, I mean, they either looking for your regular Jordan that they don't have, or right. like your LeBron, special LeBron, if they're like the sevens, the eights, like the South Beaches. They looking for Air Maxes that might be special edition. Like, that's what sneakerheads are trying to trade for, shit like that. It's, it's they they you know that's that's the primary sneakerhead, but First that's all, but what? that's why I didn't hit you up because I was going to that because I knew you was going to that event and I knew you had to work. Oh, I went by myself, but I just want to say, man, come on, man, don't be afraid to be different. Like I like dunks and shit too. Don't get me wrong, got a pair dunks, got a pair of Jordans, but I also have other pairs of shoes. You know what I'm saying? You got to be at least. Be brave to step off into a different avenue. Don't just be in the same lane. That's all I'm saying. So from there, uh, I went to the event at Plaza Midwood, which I wanted to say, I believe this should be, I want to see other June teams in other cities after going to that event. I just want to see like the differences of how people celebrate, especially now. Like I know, uh, shout out to Darius. He performed out in LA at a June, uh, June TV event. Um, also, um, who else performed? Uh, I seen some Juneteenth events in Atlanta and some festivals. I was gonna say, there so was I want to see how they do it, but I do want to give props to Do Rag Fest. They did a good job as far as being a black event featuring black art, and yeah. it was real black. You know what I'm saying? It was less African and more black. So that's what I did appreciate about the event. It I was went pretty. Last year to Do Rag, I'm, I kind of upset I didn't go this year because it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Well, this year it cost money. I heard last year it didn't cost any money. Yeah, last year you could just walk up. Yeah, so this year they had like uh, where the stage and everything was is blocked off. They had like maybe three vendors. They had a VIP serving drinks and mixing like a whole different DJ in that room. Yeah. And so uh, it was fly. I'm not going to lie, man. That whole event was fly. They had a do-rag fashion show. That shit was ill. That was nice. I seen that like, nigga with the extra long cape. I was like, God damn. Yeah, oh, yeah. A, it, it was hella extra long capes. <laughs> was, like, yeah, it was a girl out there. She had a fly one. Um. <laughs> I saw, I did see a few stories. I knew the fashion show was going to be dope. Um, I saw somebody had a dog with a do-rag on. Oh, yeah, that nigga, he had he had two dogs. It was a nigga on the skates out there, <laughs> skating through the party. Like I said, it was a real good event. We don't get uh, many times outside of a club to do black shit. So it was dope. It was a nice weekend. It was a nice outside. The weather was nice. Um... Another thing, no black vendors as far as the liquor. That would be something that we could, you know, have. I mean, I know that's tough to have because we don't own a bunch of shit as far as bars and shit like that. So, but other than that, man, I uh, even the, even the venues that had the drinks, they had a nice drink, five maybe five drink menu, real good drinks, real good uh, creative names for the event. So yeah, once again, shout out to them. Um, shout out to that event. Um, other than that, man. I'm, re I'm really going to go out of turn tonight. I want to start with this Versus, man. I want to get this Versus out the way, man. That shit was wild. Versus was last Thursday. You listening to this now on Monday. That was last Thursday. If you had an opportunity to see it, it was good. We spoke about it briefly last week on this show. Now, this Versus uh, was the first free Versus that they've had in a minute. But they are trying a new format with the undercard, which we talked about. The undercard was Ray J. And Bobby V versus Sammy and Pleasure P. So we'll, that's before we get to the main event. We'll start with the the pregame event. Man, look. the pregame event was probably more entertaining than the event. Yeah, <laughs> entertainment. -wise. I only saw pieces of the the you know that part, the part one. 
Man, I couldn't keep up. <laughs> Ray, I, Ray J was having a whole tantrum. Man, look, if you ain't never had Casamigos and you always wonder how that <laughs> shit make you act, just watch that versus. <laughs> Ray J was in rare form, boy. Yes. That man was, yo. <laughs> I'll say it in pre-production. I'm going to say it again. This is how you know a motherfucker high or drunk. When they go pick up their kids. <laughs> <laughs> And be trying to show their kids off. This is my baby boy. And trying to sing it. Yeah, that part. Like, what was come on, man. He said before the. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I got you. Hold on. You know, I got. I got, I got you. What I took me I, out I, I was his you. drunk explanation of the birth of his baby. He was. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, it was about eight years ago, but that's about ten. But it was eight uh, though. Wish to have a fancy car. Wish to have a Save million bucks. Go. Well, I wish you no being in love. Yeah, so good. When you start doing all that, yeah, you're showing your character, bro. Yeah, no. Shout out to Brandy for. <laughs> Shout out to Brandy, man. Shout she out Brandy. Stood by her brother. That nigga be standing by her brother. We all be using sister like that. Shout out to Brandy. Your sister, do you like that? She stand by you like that? I don't know. She had all the events. Mine probably would have left. She would. <laughs> Shabon would have been like, shit, this nigga. <laughs> this nigga James. This nigga over here high as a bitch. Oh, man. Drunk as a bitch. My takeaways, outside of One Wish, was, they were really pushing for him to do One Wish. He finally performs One Wish. And these <laughs> niggas, if you didn't get a chance to see it, these niggas formed a Harlem Quartet minus him. <laughs> <laughs> and, the niggas did a doo-wop circle on his ass. And, um... <laughs> What with what with and all of them sound better than him. They did. They on did. your own shit. And they did. One wish, one wish, one wish. Hey. One wish, one wish, one wish. One. Now Bobby know he wrong for leading that. Cause he the main voice I hear. Exactly. That's Bobby. <laughs> Bobby was trying to prove he still got it. It's nothing Bobby. like it's nothing like demanding respect and not getting that shit. <laughs> <laughs> No TV. The nigga say, "Look, y'all ain't gonna be playing on my motherfucking song." Them niggas was over there Yo, doo wopping. One said that wish, shit, and he was serious. <laughs> he was so serious. Oh man, yeah. yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah, man. Um, so from there, um, one thing I did take away from that: Pleasure P and Bobby V could have did a 20, 20 song versus. First of all, I think sense. a lot of people did not expect. Like they forgot Pleasure P actually got. He got some tracks. Yes. I had no idea this nigga Bobby Valentino was that little. That little bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's very short. I'm like, look at this little dude. And then he got little arms, too. And yeah, little was, fingers. Was, I was like, was oh, I had short. no idea. But anyways, he's a hell of a performer. Yes. Hell of a performer. Sammy, hell of a performer. Well, I ain't going to give him a hell of a performer, but his voice sounded really, really good. Uh, Pleasure P had no idea he did that many projects. Pro- yeah, he had a lot of songs. He had a lot of, had a lot of songs. Ray J had no idea he did that much coke before the show. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, all together, it was all right. It was all right. No facts. <laughs> I had no idea. Facts, facts, facts. Um, yeah, that's why I say they. I think Bobby V Pleasure P could would have been actually a good versus. Yeah. Just just them doing eight verses. They had some heat. Like at the end when they came back out and was dragging that shit out and Pleasure P just like, yo, run my shit. Run all my shit. Yeah, just... I, yo, that <laughs> that part right there, I was like, wow. I didn't even know he did uh, Lollipop. I didn't either. Yep. I didn't know that shit. I said, damn, that's crazy. Man, yeah. The fact that he left the stage and then came back. Yeah, he left and came back because was... Bobby V didn't want to leave. Bobby V started it. Mm-hmm. On the, it was when I seen Bobby V drunk ass on the piano. Oh, yeah. 
You knew it was all, he, he was about to go in. He don't got on that piano, shard showcasing his skills. Not to mention, Bobby V had a hit. It, each and every one of them songs Bobby V did outside that bullshit with Ludacris, <laughs> all all his regular songs was hits. Which one? The uh, Fancy Cars Women? Yeah, I didn't out? like that. Bruh. He could have kept that. song was a beast. With Ludacris. With Ludacris, True. yeah. True. If Ludacris is not coming, you don't touch my song. Don't touch the song. Right. Leave the song the alone. Ludacris part? Who? Bobby V, he did his he, part. He just yeah, but that's just what I'm saying. Like, after we get past your part, we we need that ludicrous part. Oh okay. Like well, it, he, it needs. They could have played it for fun. It needs that ludicrous part. They could have played it for fun. Then we get to the headliner man, Omarion versus Mario. Mario uh, had his DJ in his corner, and Omarion's brother Orion was in his corner DJing for him, and Omarion bought that spiritual peace synergy energy. <laughs> To 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 the, to the verses like he came in not cocky, he came in peaceful. No no, no. I take that back. No no, no 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 no. You know what? I'm lying. You lying like hell because he did not. Mario came in peaceful and Omarion started that exactly, shit. Exactly. Now that I Mario, think about it, Omarion yeah. started. Mario I mean, Mario like, started you know, that shout shit. Shout out to you. All this other stuff. And Omarion hey, was like, Hey man, don't nobody want to hear that shit. Hear that shit. No. <laughs> what? First of all. When he first came on stage, Omarion acted like he was on the scene of uh, Sorry sorry to Bother You. He was like, brother, I hope you come up. I hope you get pieces and blessings. I hope you but did- prosperity. And he was like, oh, yeah, I like that energy. That's what's up. Fake B2K, come out here. <laughs> no. That's, but, but the first thing that happened was when Mario came out. And they came to the middle of the stage. And D-Ray introduced him. He said, first of all, before we get started, this is Mario. Before we get started, I do want to say, he was like, man, stop all that talking. Let's get into it. Oh, and that's he, what I'm And Mario, that's when he was like, he all right, said, I like that energy. Yeah, he, he said, oh, that's what we doing? Cool. Yeah, because he was like, shout out to you because you the first person that went solo after being with a group. And really have yeah, like yeah, it's a oh, okay. career. True, true. And he wasn't the first. Michael Jackson was the first. But go ahead. You right. You absolutely <laughs> you, right. You actually right. But, but you actually right though. He was giving him his props. And Amarion with them ugly ass unbothered pants. Was I like bothered. those pants. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty sure. Not on his last. Hold on. I'm pretty sure somebody went solo before Mike. Oh, I think you're right. I want to say it's um, like one of them Osleys or one not, of them Pendergrasses. Uh, what was the movie that Beyonce played in? Oh, you talking about um, Dream Girls? Etta James? She went solo. She did go solo. She went. Them was backup dancers. So she went solo. backup oh, singer. Singer. Dian- Diana Ross went solo. Effie was everything. Diana, Diana Ross did go solo. Yeah. Um. Good. Gladys yeah. Knight went solo without the pips. Yes. Smokey Robinson was in a group at one time. Smokey was like solo. They ain't really had shit though. Like it was like a. I would. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay, I, 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 I'm saying I'm pushing it. Who the hell is D? Disrespected me out here. No, 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 I'm saying Smokey. You said Smokey group wasn't really yeah, popping. Yeah, nah. And he got popping. So yeah, he kind of popped on his own. Like he. You remember when Smokey had that song when he was trying to keep people off drugs? That yeah, I remember. <laughs> sure he was doing drugs. Pretty sure. Oh, man. That song was terrible. All right, so <laughs> Mario and Mario, they come out, they battle it out. This goes different than I thought it would. I really thought Omarion would bring it home. I didn't factor in the fact that Omarion can hold a note, but he can't sing for real. And he can nah, dance. Don't, don't, don't play it now. Keep the energy that you had in the group. <laughs> What? The energy that you had in the group was because when you <laughs> Mario about to be washed, like you was really because Mario a lot got of hits. hits. Oh, Mar- and I said oh, no. Mario got hits. I said no. Hits. Mario can, should not be slept on. He still got his vocals. He still got the hits. You have, I mean, granted, you probably got to be a fan of his to know that, but this it's not gonna be no wash. In my personal opinion, song for song, Mario cannot stand next to Omarion. I if you gave a DJ a an ox chord with auto tune, absolutely. Hold on, listen, listen. If you gave a DJ an ox chord, if this was the original verses where nobody performed, and they had to actually play those songs with nothing, basing it off the songs alone, Omarion kills this man just <laughs> just off the music alone. If they would have well, played the songs through, if the DJ just had played the songs and not all the extra performances, yes, I feel like it. The, the it would have been a little different. I still don't think it would have been a wash, 
but it would have been a little different because there was a lot of toss ups. Too. One thing about Mario's success though is you can't add him without saying Neo name because Neo wrote this man half of his first album. Yeah, so but, braid my hair was done by Neo. Yeah, but I'm still I'm still erring on the side of that's still a good song. It is it a is. good song. I mean, Amari, a I, hit. and no, Mario okay. don't write none of that shit. Most people don't write none of that. True, most of them True. don't aren't their own writers. I mean, but I and feel like I, I, shout out to Mario because he did line it up. Like I feel like the lineup worked out. There was maybe one or two. Yeah, writers, I like this like strategy. It, it, it should have been kind of switched. I like this strategy. Back, hold on, real quick, back to my point. I was going to take it away from this. Even if we go to Jada Kiss and the Locks versus Dipset, I think that goes differently if you pass a nigga to Oxcore and play the song As opposed to having versus rapid. the performance. Yeah. Because Mario did a hell of a job performing each and every song. Even on the songs I tied him or, or made toss ups, mm -hmm. he still did a good job singing. I just, you know, the song, I didn't know it. It was all right. You know what I'm saying? But singing wise, you know, he sounds. Great. So even with a song like Braid My Hair up against some of those rounds like Braid My Hair up against whatever Omarion played at that time, it just hit because of the performance. He won. Um, Mario played Skippin. And I feel like Skippin should not have won the round and won for me. But Omarion just fucked it up. I, well, I think that might have been the one where he brought out Jeremiah. See, I, I don't even know the song Omarion did with Jeremiah. Eight. It was it was one that if you're not a fan you wouldn't know. So really, if he, you know, like you said, had he played the music, maybe like Icebox is a winner. That's the round where Mario hit him with the girl, let me up and let me come through your yeah. speakers. Like <laughs> that song was a hit. Though. That shit really yeah. killed me. Like I had just gave up Mario on the point you for did, Icebox. And then you took it back because <laughs> shout out to I don't know who the DJ. That was perfect. That's Mario's how you use that song. Music was just. It, it sounded better, but you know something. Omarion came out there with the live band, like he was on some. T uh, what was the dude from uh, Babyface and uh, what's his name? Mm, Babyface. The first one when they, they had to reschedule it. Uh, this is before everybody got back together. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, he Teddy Riley. Trying to do a Teddy Riley. Yeah, he kept trying to do a performance. Omarion was on that type of time. He had a live band. He had watermelon <laughs> in the cooler. <laughs> Speaking of aesthetics, let's rewind yeah, for a second. Make it flat. Let's rewind for a second. Did this nigga Ray J have fucking backup dancers? Uh, Ray J. They both did. All of them did. Ray what? J had backup dancers. Omarion had backup dancers. And what's his name had backup dancers? Um, Mario J. had the one. I thought he just had the one girl, right? Oh, no, no, no. Mario had girls come out for specific songs. It was, it's a whole group. Okay. I, whole I missed group. that part. I remember one of Ray J dancers. And I started. like backup dancers. Ray, one of Ray J backup dancers start dancing with Pleasure P up there. I say, what the hell is going on? Yeah, well, you know, you know what's going on. Y'all supposed to be getting paid to dance. Y'all ain't supposed they to are. be up here. After are. the they show, it's the after dance. party. Now yeah, let's go. <laughs> but now, all in all, that was a good versus, man. It, I, it was. I scored it eight eight five. What did you score it? I scored it uh, six nine six. And the internet said Mario won anyway. I said it was a toss because up. Because his vocals were amazing. I mean, I, yeah, I said Mario. Mario. Mario, Mario won. The internet said Mario vocals won. were amazing. Omarion, he just sounded like a scratch cat. And then, like, Jeremiah didn't help him out. Yo, shout out to Tank with that toddler shirt on. He looked good. And I feel like. <laughs> Mario really tried a, a ghost. And, like, I was like, you know what? Don't. No. Tank said, this ain't my verses. So. Oh, hey, <laughs> Mario tried Tank. Tank looked at him like, did this nigga try me? He did. And Mario got real humble. He got humble <laughs> real quick. And he walked over there. And then he said, you know what? It can get real ugly real fast. This ain't my verses. And he walked off. Hey, you know what's funny? <laughs> R&B niggas trying to be tough. Yes. I don't think it's a try when it comes to people like Tank, though. It's crazy, bro. They say uh, uh, Trey Songz is a real tough guy. But you know what? We I well, think I think Trey we Songz think that way thing. because it's hard to perceive them as anything sure. other than hard. Because right. they so soft on the records. It's hard to perceive them as real gangsters. But you know, I would never try Anderson Pack. Yeah, the way he be saying I would that's not a nigga I would try. The way he said that hook. This bitch beat <laughs> that nigga, yo, he a beat your ass. Cause that, <laughs> because before he did that line be paying for shit, doing <laughs> Yeah, he'll beat your ass. <laughs> Lucky Day look like he'll slap shit out you and sing to you. Like, certain, certain Lucky niggas. Day reminds me so much of Prince. 
And I love it. Oh, like, I love it. Because yeah. even Prince look like he'll slap shit out you. Yo. Prince will actually slap re- shit out you in heels. And explain to you why, Anderson, why he did it. <laughs> Anderson Pack did his fucked motivation. fucked up on the Lake of Minnetonka's <laughs> <laughs> When you went down to the Lake of Minnetonka, you didn't drink the water. <laughs> Bitch. Bitch. <laughs> Get out of my presence. It's the king. Prince. Shit crazy. <laughs> R&B niggas, man. All right, man. But shout out to R&B, man. Um, let's stick. Let's just stick. We're gonna stick where we at right now. Jesse Smollett was on. Uh, damn. Jesse Smollett was on Sway Show. His lying ass. And <laughs> Jesse Smollett has a new movie called B Boy Blues. Oh, he got a new movie. He's directing. This is that directorial debut. Oh, he had to do on so. BET Plus with the girl from P Valley, Ebony. She's on this joint. Is that name Ebony? Right? I got that right. Um, she plays uh, Mercedes. I think that's her real name, I Ebony. I think so. I got um, And he sat down with him pretty much to talk about the movie, but they spent a good time talking about his stint in jail. Now, this man did six days in jail, and he made it sound like he did six years in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and Yo. he said, why would I make up that story? That's why his ass in there, because he fucking extra. <laughs> Very extra. That's why you went in there in the first place. He's still being saying he didn't do it. My question is, if he really didn't do it, then what really happened? <laughs> beat his ass because he asked him to beat my ass guys if he right. really didn't do it what really happened like is what happened embarrassing so he made up a story maybe he that's better than the truth maybe but he it's st- he still was attacked maybe so what happened him was and the subway guy. they were supposed to be role playing and, and it he went was, out of control he was the runaway house nigga <laughs> with oh, the two Lord. Phil hands. <laughs> this could be with the two Phil. <laughs> yeah. When they put the noose on him, it was oh, too real. Damn. Yeah, that word hit different this week. And then, you know, he went and got a sandwich to calm himself down. And when he got home, the security was like, "You know what the fuck happened to you? Why the fuck you walking around here with a sting around your neck?" He was like, "Oh, they beat me up because uh-huh. you can't tell your 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 nigga like." I, I had planned to do X, Y, Z with these two, and it didn't go as planned. You this, can't. You got to make up something. This where you fucked up though. You went and got your ass whooped and then got something to eat. Who gets, <laughs> <laughs> Who gets the ass whooping and then go get something to eat after but that? I, I respect him. Why? Because when you lie, this is a... Pro- like, he is standing on it. Stand on yeah, your lie. Right. So Bruh. many people get caught in lies and don't keep lying. Like, keep lying, dog. That nigga. No, that is my cousin. I don't care what she told you. That is my cousin. I don't really know her that well. Whatever the lie is, continue it. Bruh. Continue it to the point where everybody starts to say... Everybody start questioning whether or not... Maybe he truth. didn't do that. This <laughs> nigga took an ass whooping and said, I'm famished. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get a goddamn sub. <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas whoop shit out my ass. Yeah, I don't. Can I you don't imagine know. eating the sub? Mad as hell with Clorox on you? Shit. God damn, nigga, I can't eat you. This nigga hit me pretty good. All right, good job, y'all. I'm gonna go get a sandwich. Y'all get as far as way as you can. I'm gonna call the police. This is gonna go over well. Thank you guys. I I'm appreciate. Like, damn, nigga, you hit pretty good. I, I was planning on getting the sandwich after this. Oh Fuck man. Fuck my jaw up. That's why he went to Subway. Smash that shit together. <laughs> yeah, y'all niggas are stupid. You trying to see if he can still chew after that? <laughs> God, yeah, damn. Alright, um also man, a Los Angeles judge decried a declared a mistrial in the Suge Knight case. Now I don't know if that oh, means he's shit. getting out or not. I don't right. know if y'all remember what happened, man. During the time of the uh straight out of Compton movie, um he was he had some gripes about who was playing him and how he was being portrayed in the movie, so he pulled up on a nigga that had something to do with the whole movie and he <laughs> ran him over with a car and oh, then, my God. like he beat his ass, ran over him with a car and then backed up over him. So he's got like a he, he went to jail for I think negligence and he already had a case out for him. So yeah. I think they sentenced him to twenty eight years. Now since he's been in jail, every rapper that has had something to do with Suge Knight has been talking shit. That would include Snoop Dogg. <laughs> he said some things. I don't know if he would say them if uh, Suge was out, but everybody, even Master P in that documentary, kind of said some things. I was like, mm, did it really go that way? Would Suge say it went that way? Man. I'm going to just say this. I don't know whatever happened because, you you know, you've seen the shit over years. But one thing I do know from this whole thing is Sugar wasn't no fucking joke. 
I know that. For him, for people to be like scared of him the way he was, bro, this man probably would have killed you. I think the only one that probably matched him in as far as like anger or somebody not to try is Dr. Dre. Damn. It was reportedly like those two, they were just two niggas you ain't fuck with. Mm. So I feel like Dr. Dre was. Uh, I still, I still like, I feel, feel like Dre is scared of him, but at the same time, there's a respect between the two. Because they have the same baby mom. I, I don't even know. They do? Me, uh, Michelle A. What? Oh, I didn't know that. She, well, I don't know. I don't know if she has a baby by Sh- Dre. I want to, I, Oh, does she? Uh, she got a baby by either Suge or Dre. Either way, according to her documentary that came out that she narrates, she dealt with both of them. She was reportedly abused by both of them. Well, I feel like there's a mutual respect because he a producer and Suge Knight is really a gangbanger. And from what I've been, from what I've seen or what I what I know, or you know, what I'm saying what I hear, it seems like the violence is usually. Of course, anybody can get it. But maybe because he knows he's not a gangbanger, or maybe he got some type of respect for Dre, whatever that may be. And we don't know if he ever, never laid laid hands on Dre. We don't really know. We only I only know what the movie show. You know, the nigga True. came in the yeah. office, said, "Yo, I'm getting out of here. You know, you can keep everything you have, my masters. I'm out." You know, did it really go that way? We don't know. Did she like jack the nigga up? Said, "Yeah, I'm keeping your shit, you bitch ass nigga." Like we don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But. <laughs> like James, like James said, man. I mean, if there's anybody really to fear outside, it's like him. Like, yeah, he's I, a scary figure. Honestly, I would like to see the Suge Knight movie. That's something I want to watch. Yeah, that'd be crazy. That would be dope. Cause I want to know how somebody got that much power. Like, how do you come to power? Like, what made people follow you? I don't know what if made you would ever be you. able to tell us the truth, though, in order for them to put it in movie, movie form. You know what I mean? Why is that? Why because is that? Because he had like. One, he does have other. He's been hell. I don't even know how if he has. I was cases. gonna say. I, I was gonna say. Why is that with black people? Like why? Why he? Why he can't? Like we got movies on John Gotti. We got movies. True, on, but I feel like he's still somebody that. What's the what's the uh, word I'm looking for? Like um, um, what is it? After a certain amount of time, you can't be tried for certain things. I oh, feel like, like seven years. Okay. Yeah, I, know I feel like that, that doesn't really apply to him. He's still kind of relevant. So, yeah. Okay. Certain shit he probably can't talk about, and based on code alone, street code he probably can't talk about. So we would probably get a very high level if you know if we were to get a movie, it would be very high level touch and go. Hmm. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, he, he should definitely write a book, but I, I want him to age like Frank Lucas because I want the full story. I want to know what the fuck happened. True. I want to know if we got one. It would definitely be once he got older. Like this man came up with a whole record label. He don't rap at all. Most record label owners. Outside of Jay Prince, mm-hmm. were Master P rapped. <laughs> you know, Birdman didn't rap. Okay, Birdman. So like, yeah, well, nah, he rapped. He rapped, but I think he just wanted to. He started he the label on a track. Yeah, he started. Tra- no, I'm saying he started yeah, the yeah. label with his artist though. He wasn't the first. He wasn't his first artist. Like Master P was his first artist. I'm saying Birdman wasn't his first artist. His first artist was the Hot Boys or Juvenile. Right. I think it was Juvenile. So I feel like, or either he'll do a um, a tell-all interview like Quincy Jones. Uh, no bullshit. That would be dope. That would be that real was a dope. great interview. Like Quincy. It was like two hours. Yeah, Quincy Jones that was shit. A good interview. Yeah, that shit was. And Wayne and Birdman had this album back in the day called Like Father Like Son. I heard that album was real good. <laughs> Never listened to it. Never listened <laughs> there to it. There ain't no love. Yeah, hey, if you, you know what? I put fan, it on the gym one that. time. I didn't make it through it. Oh, you didn't? No, I didn't make it through. I put oh. it on in the gym one time. I didn't make it through it. This is a couple good tracks on there. Man, you did that's you did yourself a disjustice. No, I, I'm still gonna finish it. Do that you want to share it with the people what you did put on in the gym and oh, you couldn't finish? Have you heard the Beyonce? <laughs> no, I was trying to wait till Johnny got back. Okay, let's 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 Because it's only appropriate to discuss that. Yeah, because I I need to see. I need to see. Because if I play that song right now, no, no, no. Yeah, don't play it now because I know James' (laughs) shoulder is going to move. I want to. You might as well play it. No. Have you not heard the Beyonce? No, I ain't. ain't. I'm I'm saving it for what Johnny comes back. We're going to wait until Johnny comes back. You you really haven't heard Beyonce's new song? I haven't. Yo, listen, I am not the biggest Beyonce fan. 
<laughs> when I tell you I was in the gym and my hips were about to start moving left to right. <laughs> I was, All right now. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, go over there on the elliptical checking you out. Hey, check me on out, brother. Yeah. I got moves. <laughs> I got moves. You say you must be listening to Beyonce. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. That track is like that, man. It that is. Chick. And I don't <laughs> This is going to feed my narrative even longer. I do not like seeing the reels with the white women posting it. <laughs> I'm not feeling it. <laughs> why you don't, why you don't like listen, man. Women listen, I know it'd be coming off as white woman hate, but I'm, I'm just not feeling it. It's not white woman hate. It's like, I don't know. I just hate when white women start walking like they got fat asses. Cut it out. I kind of like that. Cut it out. No, Definitely, if you if you know good and well, you ain't got nothing. But cut it out. You so one thing, do the Beyonce walk. One thing white women have done to help them help their ass out is they wear the tightest of tights and they pull the tights up so far. Oh yeah, they that the it. thing. Yeah, so the 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 string that go in between the crack is just actually up in their ass, so you could just see the shape of their butt. So I, I I'm not I, I really wouldn't know if they have nice butts, but they look t- nice and tights, man. Well, so. I'll tell you one thing. Once them shits come off, it all falls. That's what all uh, old black man told. Yeah, <laughs> that's what old black man told me. Uh, real quick, shout out to Naomi Osaka. She teamed up with LeBron to launch a full service media com- company called Hannah Kuma. That's what's up. So shout out to that a platform to tell stories about different cultures and social issues and more. All right, man. Let's get into it, man. Uh, the Supreme Court passed. Roe versus Wade. It's crazy, man. Uh, I'll kick this to D real quick. But uh-uh. I, yeah, uh-uh. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not. <laughs> what, what do you want me to say? <laughs> so Roe versus Wade is pretty much predominantly a bill known uh, to protect people's abortion rights on a federal level. It has a Friday of last week. They overturned that bill. The Republicans voted to overturn that yep. bill out. Uh, so therefore, abortion rights aren't protected at a federal level, mm. and it would be left left up for states to decide whether or not uh, abortions are legal, are mm. supported, or backed, or what have you. Um, now we live in North Carolina. In North Carolina, abortion is neither banned nor protected. Yeah, we're on, the the state is on the fence. Um, um, it's believed that. I, we're we'll be we'll be okay, but as long as Roy Cooper is in office, yeah. exactly. Um, but if that changes, then that may change. Um, now, right, and as of now, for all the worried women out there, I know there's a lot of people. I've seen a lot of tears on the internet. Uh, my heart goes out to all of those women I've seen crying on the internet, frustrated, screaming, yelling. Um, I get it, I get it. Uh, but as of now, it seems like. South Dakota, Kentucky, and Louisiana will have complete bans taking place as of right now, as we speak. As you listen to this podcast, if you live in those three states, it's illegal to get an abortion. It's illegal to assist in someone getting an abortion. It's illegal if you do the abortion. All of those will come with penalties. Mm -hmm. Now, to follow in the next 30 days, North Dakota, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Arkansas, Missouri, and Tennessee. So I think maybe eight of those states could have to have a vote in, which is assumed that they'll actually vote to outlaw it. Um, the rest of those already have laws in place, so there just needs to be a 30-day period that applies for those to kick in. Uh, Washington, Oregon, and Karen, uh, California are launching initiatives to protect people uh, who do come out there to get um, abortions. Um, a little bit more on what just happened. For those who don't know, also in the Roe versus Wade bill, or in the summary that was brought up, excuse me for smacking my teeth, in the summary that was brought up, this also has uh, touches on the rights for gays to get married, this touches uh, on the yeah, right for um, interracial couples, and it also touches on the rights to uh, contraceptives. I think the next thing down the line is Planned Parenthood may be under attack, under attack here. I ain't gonna say maybe the the news analysts sound like Planned Parenthood would be next. If I'm if I let me get this right, Planned Parenthood educates people on how to you know alternative ways to prevent pregnancies. Planned Parenthood is there to help you. Help and you. Okay. Justice Clarence Thomas is the the dumbass that wrote to the Supreme Court that it's a black man, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, that it should Clarence be considered. Reconsidered. His wife is white, right? 
rulings to protect um reconsider the rulings that protect contraception same-sex relationships and same-sex marriage <clears throat> he is the one that specifically wants the supreme court to look at these rulings um and it, it's unfortunate and it's the reason why i'm quiet i know listeners are like you know you, y'all got a female there why she's not talking it's a touchy subject it's fucked up um it's also one of those things where i i i did scroll a little bit um and i find it very interesting um you know jump man you did a great job you're explaining it giving facts but we have a lot of men out here that are speaking on something that they will never understand and it is really hurtful it's inconsiderate and it's probably a very good time for every man to take a step back and ask yourself if you need to speak or not um because it, it's a lot of men that are you know clapping hands saying you know this is a great thing <laughs> we're, we're heading in the right direction you know right for america all this other bullshit but it's about to be a scary time because you're now taking away something to where you're going you're pretty much leaving women the option to either um you know abstinence choosing not to have sex choosing not to have kids we already see women that are dying or being killed or hurt when they tell these men no it's about to be a scary time fellas ain't no plan b's i want y'all to know that fellas (laughs) uh they talking about contraception plan b is a form of contraceptive Condoms. It may not be a plan B. Condoms. <laughs> it may not be a condom. So what you trying to uh, I didn't, it ain't gonna be no condom. My my thing is this. I didn't say condoms because they're not using them. <laughs> they use a plan B. That's they, why they are uh, there are a what, lot of and it's it's unfortunate because a lot of people do depend upon plan B. Which I talked to a woman today and she said those forms of contraceptives you won't have to worry about. She said they're more aiming towards the whole planned parenthood structure. But it goes back to the art debate we were having about condoms and contraceptives and big business. Mm-hmm. I feel like the drug companies who make the drugs for these particular things have more power than the citizens. They do, but my but, thing is you have birth to, control. To lobby against yeah, Birth control certain is things. going to be impact. Yes, those, those, birth controls. Um, I, I, I talked to a friend Ivy today. Rings, whatever. The, those, and, the, those are contraceptives. Those things are going to be impacted. Those things literally sit inside of a woman. The government is now making, trying to make decisions about something that a woman carries in her body outside of a, a child. It's, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It's hurtful. And, I, and it's, it's one fucked of the, up. It's one of those things where I'm like, I guess you got to watch it unfold to see what move they're going to make. I um, mean, it, it I, I'm not saying, and, and I don't vote, so I, you know, I don't know. They're saying call your your uh, your local Congress. They're yeah. saying call push to to vote this person in. I did have this question for I guess you and James. Um, when do when do we stop voting? When when do we find other ways to get things done? Like I understand that's how this world works. That's how the system works. And you have to, you know, work inside it for change 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the line. But when do the citizens or when do the women figure out what they can take in their hands to control their own fate? Because one thing I did gather from all people, uh, men and women, who uh, men who were compassionate towards those women, what I did gather was a sense of defeat. I've been gathering that throughout this whole year coming out of this pandemic. With uh, inflation rising, mm-hmm. um, we got the airlines fucked up, which yeah. I'll get to later. Um, inflation is a beast alone. We got the I gas say. prices high, and I see everybody blame the government, the president, the wars, the decisions being made. And I always ask myself, you know, in 2020 and 2016 and 2008, we push hard to get certain fi- officials elected, and you push hard to get those people in these seats to do jobs. But this is the bullshit that you have to deal with. I think with. It, it's tied to groupthink in a way because we we kind of see the bullshit that you know that we're being dealt when we are voting. It's almost like a a fear. What happens when we don't? We don't know, and we're not willing to take that risk because we, we're already freaking formula sh- shortage. You got babies that cannot eat because you know I've uh, ignorance is bliss at times but some people are just fucking stupid 
you have men that say, well, why aren't y'all just breastfeeding? You know, until you have a baby feed from you, it's not the easiest thing to do. And not every mother can produce milk. So, yes, a formula shortage is a big fucking issue. So we just we have a lot of things that we're facing that, yes, we feel defeated as women. We feel defeated as a nation. We don't know what's next. And we're almost and I say we as collective, we're almost too fearful to say, well, let's just not do it because Uh Okay. What the fuck really happens? Just to touch on the Infamil, I work somewhere where they sell Infamil, and that shit be empty. I yeah. mean, lying. Like I went to the store. There's nothing full. there. It ain't. It ain't nothing in that cage, bro. I'm trying to tell you, they got the generic brands, and that's it. Like that shit crazy. And no, for all fair. the for the, all the people that are reposting, retweeting these, how to make natural formula and things of that nature. Listen. Your children, these babies are not us. Their bodies ain't set up like that. So be mindful before you just get out here and try to make something and sell it. Because I I have seen a woman, unfortunately, she's trying to mass produce her own formula. It's like that. That's a scary thing to play with. There's a reason you have dietitians in hospitals. Nurses consult them to tell you what the baby needs and so on and so forth. And I know a lot of niggas out here don't believe in science or, Hey, they just out to get your money or whatever. All right, bro. I think, yeah, I, I, there's a reason that these people are appointed. This Roe versus Wade is some bullshit. Um, like I told y'all before we started recording, it's to me, it's like the police telling y'all, we're we going to start charging y'all for every time we find out you, you masturbate and waste a nut. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta look over your shoulder, bro. Let them outlaw masturbating. If these niggas beating in the street, get nigga. soft, nigga. Beating in the street, it'll be a Karen. Ah, I'm calling the police. <laughs> You're overstimulating yourself. I will say this though. Um, this is the prime example of um how men. I'm not gonna say white men. I'm not gonna. Demean it to a race This is how men keep their power And then I watched on CNBC today People The people in favor of this The speakers were all women mm. There yep. are women Who support this bullshit Yep um, And so until And I guess I say I that I feminist th- Yes I guess I say that To, to say like was, We're divided Yeah On yeah. all fronts Whether uh-huh. it be race Woman on woman, man on man, black against white, black on black. We stay divided, you know. And with that division, men are able to creep in and pull whatever they need. It's no different than um, Trump saying, well, I can get black people to vote for me. Because we're not a monolith. I could come in and scoop a couple of y'all with, hey, I'm a religious man. And y'all are religious people. I hate to say this because usually what I say come true. So I'm going to go ahead and knock on wood. But like So Outside of this I ain't got nothing to say about this Because I'm not a woman But outside of this If we just pay attention to what's going on And how they are going back And changing laws It's very scary And it's one law That I have in mind That they probably going to try to do the same way And that's Arms Guns I'm pretty sure In the future it's going to be something like this targeted towards guns. I think that would be more on a federal level, but more so on a martial law level. That's what I, that like, right. I, I feel like it's on that. Like you right. Because that is like the second amendment. And one right. thing I know about America on both sides is their willingness to protect guns. Right. They but. just passed uh, this bill today. I'll read this real quick. So they just passed new gun violence legislation. Uh, The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. This is supposed to provide funding for mental health services and school security initiatives. Expand criminal background checks for some gun buyers. Bars a larger group if domestic violence offenders are purchasing guns. So this will keep larger groups of domestic violence offenders from purchasing guns. Because I think if you have domestic violence Offenses Depending on what they are You still can get a gun Um Also Um It's funding programs For authorities To seize guns From troubled Individuals So this is what they Chose as their win On Friday 
that they were at least able to get some type of gun legislation passed due to all the mass shootings that happen here in America. Now, what's a troubled individual? Now, what 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 category does that fall, fall in? into? Yes. See, see, it's the wording with some things that you got to listen to, man. It's the wording with everything. I think it's important for people to know what exactly Roe v. Wade covers because until I watched the news today, I didn't. You know, I'm like everybody else. Oh, it's an abortion bill. No, it's more than abortion. It's yeah. more than that, it's yeah. Than and that. and this gun rights thing, you have to read the language. It's more than uh, safer communities. What does safer communities mean? It's no different than in the 90s when they had the war on drugs and they were passing laws. And th- What does that mean? Right. For but the they, citizens on the street, what does that mean for the people? They uh, was demon motherfucking drug users that never used drugs, though. And that's, that's the scary thing. That's what he's... So you saying they said deem uh well people that they look at as a threat or whatever you said people that shouldn't have guns, but that's gonna be people that they deem unworthy to carry. You yeah, know what I'm saying, and, and I don't. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what. Yeah, you're right. I don't know what that piece of language is gonna translate to. Man, you know? if you pay attention, man, they trying to do a social system. How they have in China, and that means it goes off your behavior or what you do. So you talking about socialism? Yes. So to me, they gonna deem you as a motherfucker. Like if you don't want to get along, then you're gonna be deemed as one of those people. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Well, you don't want to go by this, so you're you can't carry a gun. You better believe that's where it's going. Like it, it, bro. It's just it's crazy. It's just crazy. That's all I can say. It's crazy. That's just like you you voting in favor of Roe v. Wade. Oh, you like that? Okay, well, you ain't going to be able to shop at Walmart tomorrow. You and, ain't going to be able and, to take... And, that, and that's another thing. Like, people who vote in favor of stuff like that up there on Supreme Court, don't, I, the people who vote on our laws, it don't affect them. Yeah. That's another and thing that's I noticed. Not- like, it don't really affect them. These people make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It don't affect them. We literally got... No, they'll always they'll always have access to whatever it is that they whatever they, that they, they need. Oh, yeah, what they need. And These shout laws. out to what is it? Dick's uh, Sporting Goods just joined the the realm of companies that's going to support support shout out to them. people that need to to get to where they you know if they should need it. Listen, um, I would like to see these laws and these people who vote on these laws if they only made seventy grand a year, sixty grand a year. 42 grand That's our favorite number Here at KSP 42 grand a year <laughs> what, if, what if What if they made that How I, How would you vote then When things are Affecting you And that's why I guess that's why I say I understand what you're saying Like I'm not against you Like I get it You know Yeah landed out here You don't vote But then what do we do So it's like Yeah vote But damn I wish that The 1% Didn't d- decide The fate of the many That's crazy to me like it's, it's, the rich is basically telling us the the people down here at the bottom, hey, this should be a good all right, yeah, we're gonna inflate the yeah, we, but y'all can afford four forty nine for a while. Shift around your money, dude. It's like, yo, I tell people all the time, man, America, if you leave America, when you come back to America, you realize no matter your situation in America, you rich. Richer than a lot of people. Yeah. You, you can live in the projects. You're I wouldn't richer. say you're rich, but you better off than. No, you're rich. You're rich. Okay. No, you're fucking rich compared to a lot of these fuckers out here. Damn. And I'm not. That? I'm not shitting on them, but like, I want. I want Americans to realize that, like, and that's something they won't get until they leave. Like, even a nigga in the project living on government assistance, he has four walls, windows, electricity, probably has cable, and wears yep. Air Jordans. He has way more than a than a person in in, than a, in a third country. And so I say all that to say, like, when you get over here in America, outside the world looks at us, has this, America's a corporation, and it's seen that way from now. Everyone here is rich to everybody outside, and it's a big oh, yeah. ass, it's a big ass rat waste, and America's almost like if you don't get money, then you fucked. If you don't get rich, then you fucked. If you're not chasing security financially in America, fuck the laws, fuck the system, fuck the government, fuck all of that. If you're not chasing the dollar, then you, you're behind. Yeah. You're going to get left behind. Sorry. I'm not going to stay on this too long. I just want to get that out the way. Um, real quick. Update on Brittany Griner. I seen this on the news, uh, and I wanted to share it here with you guys. Um, so... Yeah, Brittany, go. 
Let's see if I can find it. I think I, they said she's not a hostage yeah. or some shit like that. Here we go. The Kremlin's first comments after two American veterans forces. Russian television has broadcast interviews with two Americans captured in Ukraine. Ali so this is Putin's representative. He's speaking about uh, he's going to touch on what's going on with Brittany Griner. Struki and Andy Wen. Where are they? Uh, who is holding them? And what happens next? They're soldiers of fortune and they were involved in illegal activities on the territory of Ukraine. They were involved in firing and shelling our, our right military personnel. They were endangering their life. From the they should be held responsible for those crimes that they have committed. In an exclusive interview, I asked Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov about the two British nationals and a Moroccan captured by separatist rebels in Ukraine, now sentenced to death. Can you guarantee that these Americans will not face the same fate? No, I cannot guarantee anything. It depends on the investigation. And we asked about another American being held in Russia, WNBA star Brittany Griner, who was detained at the airport in February, accused of carrying vape cartridges with hashish oil. She was coming to take part in sports in Russia, effectively trying to build bridges through sports. It's a terrible message, isn't it, that she should be arrested? It is also a terrible mes message to, to bring some forbidden essences and uh, materials to this country. And it is prosecuted by Russian laws. The special presidential envoy for hostage affairs is now leading the U.S. effort uh, to secure Brittany Griner's release. So the U.S. government is now approaching this as a hostage situation. I would strongly disagree with that. We cannot call her hostage. She violated Russian law. And now she's being prosecuted. Nate. So... But he's right. Like, as much as I, I want Britney home no more than anybody else. But she, he's right. That's, again, if, if you go in another country, the laws of America don't apply to you exactly. everywhere you go. When you touch down in, let's say you touch down in Cuba, and it's against the law to have cigarettes, and you get caught with cigarettes, and for cigarettes in Cuba, it's 20 years in jail. Damn. That's the penalty you face. I feel you, but for hasish oil, bro, come on. Now. And you, and that's what I, and that's that goes back to what I was saying about being from America and seeing the world the way you see it, because you live in America and the sheesh oil ain't shit here. Right, but you, my thing is, bro. They said she had a cartridge. It's that's, an illegal substance. You right, but damn, you deserve how long? Over there, yeah. Over there, it's different. Over, over here, that's a ticket. That's a slap on the wrist. But over that's there, crazy. over there, they could do whatever they want with her. And that's the scary part. Like, when you go to another country and break laws, do y'all remember in the 90s, there was a... It ain't, this happens all... Oh, remember Angelo Ball got caught stealing? Yeah. Remember oh, Angelo yeah. Ball got caught stealing? Angelo Ball could have faced... Some crazy time for something yeah. everybody was like. He just stole some clothes. American shit. He just stole some shit. Trump he went over there and helped him though. But what? And that's and I guess I guess that's what everybody argument is like. Where is the U.S. government? She had a phone call scheduled with her girlfriend, her her wife, and it was missed because they're understaffed at the U.S. embassy. <laughs> like I don't think this would happen to anybody else. That's crazy. But yeah, I mean, I do feel like she's being let, hung out to dry here. That's Not crazy. to mention that we're in a war. I think the scariest thing, well, they're in a war, but I think the scariest thing is as he closes this interview, the guy asked him, um, you know, do you think you guys will continue to pursue what you're pursuing in Ukraine? He in turn tell them, yes, be in for a long battle. And we will never trust the West again. Mm. Meaning that we not fucking with y'all. So after we done in Ukraine, we got more work to do. Mm. That's what that says to me. We don't fuck with the West. Period. We're not civil no more. You know, we're not homeboys. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. Like our relationship is done. Fuck y'all. And y'all keep sending them niggas money. We're gonna beat y'all ass. But um, all right, that's it in politics, man. Um before I get out of here, man, 
a couple top news stories. Netflix lays off 300 more employees. Ooh, has a response to Netflix decline in growth. They've lost over 300 employees in what is said to be the first round of lay- layoffs. Um, they still plan on investing heavily in content, about $17 billion of content, and they also plan on adding ads to Netflix. They would not have lost people if they wouldn't have blocked the sharing of the password. They haven't blocked it yet, have they? They're still working on it. They're trying to. They're trying to. I think they lost people because of the emergence of streaming TV. I said that before here on the show. We got stars, HBO, <laughs> Paramount, Disney. Um, The article also mentioned Discovery and Warner. They say that this is not the mm. only company feeling this in Hollywood. They say a lot of it has to do with the decline in the stock price, so they have to adjust. They have to let a couple people go to get their margins back to 20%. That's what the article is saying. I've read that. That's from CNBC. <laughs> Um, and Variety. I also read an article in Variety. So that's what they're saying on that. Um, also, airlines, if you guys are traveling for the fourth, have some extra cash on hand. You might be stuck where you at for a day or two extra. There is an airline shortage and there's an air, there's an air pilot shortage and an airline traffic control shortage. Uh, air traffic control workers... Uh, have been operating more days than they they normally have. They've been overworked. They're so short staffed, and since they are short staffed, they're not allowed to have as many flights in the air. Right. So they have to cut flights. On top of these, pilots are starting to strike because they want substantially more money. I'm here. Well, that's so. they. You don't like. I think people have this misconception that if you work for an airline, if you're a flight attendant, you make all this money. They you, don't. You make decent money if you enjoy traveling. Then it, it pans out well for you. But you literally have people that are working the grounds that are working, you know, these aren't easy jobs. These aren't jobs that are safe either. No. And they getting paid less than $20 an hour. But I can go over here and work at Target for fucking 20 to $24. And hell, I can work overnight and not even have to talk to nobody. No, I'm not going to stay out here in this fucking, in this heat and try to direct this damn, this, this plane to come in. Fuck that. Yes. So, no, I feel like airlines are way overdue with increasing the wages of their employees. And very similar to truck drivers, they have a cap on the amount of hours that they can work. So when uh, when they hit those caps, that's it. The crew is done. The crew can't, they can't do nothing extra. The pilot can't do a little, one, you know, one last run. No, when they hit that cap on their hours, that's it. Because mm. if not, then the airline, you take a big fine. You also are facing safety. And me personally, I understand people, we got to get places, we got to do shit, whatever. But I don't want nobody tired as daddy, uncle, cousin, auntie, nobody being responsible for me 30,000 feet up in the air and no, they facts. sleepy as fuck. No, facts. No, y'all, facts. Like, y'all ever flight. been, yeah, y'all I've ever been flight. driving and you get on a, a dark stretch of the road, you got to turn your music up, let, let the windows down to do something Start like this. Start yelling. Ah! <laughs> Cause they shit to look at you and like the tiredness start hitting you. Yeah, nah, I don't want nobody. They got autopilot. Nigga. Man, nigga, what? Autopilot works. Did you not see flight? Autopilot works as long as the, <laughs> as the fucking people that's in that tower are right. rested as well. Because right. they are the ones then responsible making sure that your ass know when to turn that shit off. Exactly. And I if mean, they tired, then hell, we all fuck. Yeah, we all fuck. But I'm pretty sure it's don't happen to where they don't put Bro, autopilot on. you got to talk in the mic. To You're killing me. Oh, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they have put autopilot on and went to sleep up there. You are not supposed to. Yeah, I'm I wouldn't sure say have. that. I, I'm not for this, my sanity because I've flown a lot. I don't believe that anyone has put on autopilot, autopilot as a pilot and just went to sleep. Because when not. you are up there, you're facing birds. You ever seen a bird hit, hit the propellers? The it's scary to see. I've never seen it personally, but I've seen videos. That shit's scary. That shit'll wake you up, though. <laughs> they burn up, don't you? <laughs> they Hell burn yeah. up, but can, it can also affect the t- take out the engine or whatever. Like it can it can cause issues. I heard. So I seen on the other movie about the flight crashing, the birds hit the window. The oh thing. yeah. Like you don't and you don't want to be no. I, they hell no. They yeah, not I'm sleep. on the ground. They not sleep. 2022 on the ground. James, I, ain't, I ain't about to sit here and play with you. I'm gonna say they not sleep. How many times you gonna fell asleep at your job and got away with? It? Honestly, I ain't never been one. But anymore. if your job to drive some, you ain't falling asleep. You should. <laughs> you think truck well, drivers nigga, fall asleep? You don't get no job. Truck drivers fall asleep. 
Oh nigga, yeah, that's why they be pulled over on the oh, side yeah. of the road. Nigga, that nigga got a load, dude. How you, you pull say, your plane? That. How you pull your plane over? Shit, you, you can't. can't. That's what <laughs> exactly. I'm saying. Autopilot. So when they done, they are done. <laughs> you be like, shit. Let me turn. You be flying them up. God damn. <laughs> Because you're supposed to have a co-pilot up Y'all, there with you. if James apply for the be a pilot. <laughs> nigga, I'm not getting on that plane, nigga. James, it's like soul plane. Hey, what if you see, because you know you usually see your pilot before you get on the plane. They be walking together, right? You see that nigga yarding? <laughs> <laughs> nah. That nigga stretching. God damn. That's our pilot? Nah, get that nigga a coffee. Nah, that I'm not doing work. that. It's crazy, man. It, but uh, it, is, it, be, it is fucked degrees? up. I hope they increase the wages of people. <laughs> um, my younger brother used to work at airlines. They 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 overwork. They overwork like shit. Mm. Do they get paid a lot? No. No, nah, they don't get paid. They get much, paid man. maybe fifteen. I think uh, it was reported that if you're outside, like the, the people that are on the outside loading the bags and directing the planes, they get paid maybe fifteen, seventeen an hour. Mm, that's, I'm getting paid less than twenty dollars an hour to be in in whatever conditions, because I've had them do an emergency land in Arizona due to a, a sandstorm. Mm. It was still niggas outside. I'm getting paid seventeen dollars and for potentially getting ran over by a plane because the plane can't see me, I can't see it. The last moment, seventeen dollars an hour in what year? I'm talking about um, <laughs> and the how plane old am I? <laughs> driver, <laughs> the pilot. It's a lot of money to I, the crew five. actually does not get paid until the and I, I could be wrong if we have a listener that is a flight attendant correct me but I want to say uh, a flight attendant I know the crew does not get pay, get paid until the doors close mm. that's why they try to encourage you to sit down and get your seat get started so once that door closes now they can get paid for that flight mm, got mm. you got you all but right they get canceled oh all bets off you ain't getting paid. right got you. Oh, still. Uh, last but not least, man, Steve Clifford is the head coach of the Hornets again, man. <laughs> when is, what tenure was he the head coach? No, we're going to the finals, bro. Hot that. No, what tenure was he the head coach? Oh, before? he up now. Uh, he was the head coach when Big Al and Kimba, and he coached all the way up into this new coach. Mm. So that was his whole stint. We were from the Bobcats to the Hornets, that was him. I don't think they should have. Uh, fired uh, my man Brad Stevenson. That nigga, that wasn't Brad Stevenson. Who, what was his name? James Barrigo. Yeah, that nigga. He, he was, was trash. Decent. You think he was trash? Keep talking to Mike. He was, he was trash. I thought he was decent. He sucked at managing talent. He couldn't manage the team. Oh, well. Yeah, in some gang situations, he would just, the, the lineup would be atrocious. I was like, why the fuck is these niggas in? Uh, shout out Santana, you know, doing his thing. But did you hear they talking about trading Kai? For real? It's fucked up, bro. Where, where to? Uh, I didn't. See, but they talking about it. They putting him in a package deal. They talking about package him up and sending him away. Uh, shit, whoever trying to be a suitor. I heard they trying to uh, get heard. Westbrook. I heard they trying to get Miles Turner and they oh Los get, Angeles. Yep, and they trying to get a uh, Deontay Aiden. So in, Horn, in the Hornet uniform. Yeah, Deontay Aiden. Yeah, from the Suns. Yeah. Oh, wow, I love him. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow I love him. <laughs> Yo, yeah. shout out to Charlotte, man. That's a Yo, bold move. Charlotte <laughs> trying to make some moves this year. I, would, I wouldn't want Westbrook by himself, though. Like, if we get Westbrook and we still look the same, no. Well, we're not going to win with Westbrook. But that's what I'm saying. Now, but why we get, get Westbrook if you got Melo? Right. And I agree with that. But it, now, if we get Westbrook and Aiton together... Why get Westbrook when you got Melo? I know. We get Melo and A in the bruh, they, you, you pretty much might as well say they, they a done deal because they talking about it heavy. It, the only suitors that they saying is Charlotte. We're going to lose Melo. Watch. I, I We're going to lose so. Melo. I would think so if Westbrook coming. We're going to lose. But, I mean, that would be stupid, man. Melo's out of here, bro. If Westbrook come, it's, it's TikTok. Melo, go, I mean Lamelo going. Lamelo should be the future of our team. Like everything should revolve around the offense. Everything should be revolved around what's going to help him win because he just need people to pass to dog. Like he, I agree. He'll score second, nigga. But I was just <laughs> gonna say, you know, if you got um, Westbrook at the two, you know, what I'm saying you pass it to him. The thing is, you have to understand, like he's a ball dominant guard. He is though. He is. So you got two ball dominant guards. One's gonna pass. See, I've I've noticed like, and don't try to train Lamelo to 
not have the ball in his hands. Like, don't I, I'm not I'm not saying it wouldn't help his career, but he's got a good thing going. Just right. I've noticed like with some players, they have a half court game. They can only play half the court. You know what I'm saying? Like once they get past that line, then they can actually do something or be effective. Like shooters, like some wing players and stuff. All they do, like the three and D type guys, you only effective half court. Well, if you got defense, you good. But you know what I'm saying? Your your offense only come in half court. So it's 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 crazy. Like with a point card like Lamelo, Lamelo, his offense start right when he get the ball because he can see somebody open, boom, pass it right to him. But I mean, hey, it is what it is though. But we gonna see. We gonna see. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. I feel like Westbrook. He he's a uh, he's a half court type of player, man. I don't think that's because he's that. looking to score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lamelo's looking to set up the team. Right. So, all right, man. Um, Anything's possible. Anything's possible. All right. Real nigga of the week goes out to Tonio Hughes. Not Tonio. Now, Tonio Hughes did something I expect to see on court TV a lot of times when people get found guilty. What Tonio do? Beat the nigga ass who did the shit to your family. Damn. Instead of just watching him walk Sounds with the little like cuffs on his hand and to do his jail time. Sounds like justice. That sounds like real justice. So, Tonio uh, Hughes uh, was in court when they played the confession from the killer of his son's mother and his son. Mm-hmm. Um, mother and son? He killed yeah. the mother and son. Oh, this is justified. And son. This is so, justified. I for your view and pleasure. Back up, up in 560 now. So for those that are not aware of the story, we don't even feel none of that. He killed the mother and then he threw his son in the river. Sit down. To the toddler in the river. So yeah, he deserved every ounce of that ass whoop. You think oh. they gonna charge him? Uh, Who, the, the dad? Yeah. Maybe a couple days in jail. He might get a couple for like, what is it? Disorderly. Yeah, disorderly conduct or something. Disruptive of court, some bullshit. I don't but think that's fair. I feel like it, on the basis of emotional distress or mental break, something. I don't think he should be charged. I right. would give a hand clap, but my heart goes out to him, man. That's, that, that's pain. That he had to do that. That's yeah, pain. That's why I was saying. When they was trying to detain him, he didn't feel none of that. He's still running nigga of the week, but that is pain. Yeah, he didn't feel none of that. That's probably Better what believe that. Nicole Kim and mom wanted to do the OJ, but she was like, that nigga got a pig. <laughs> we not doing that. It's like, man, it's crazy. <laughs> Especially Ron Goldman, daddy. Y'all ever seen that OJ shit with uh, Cuba Gooden Jr.? I, yeah, it's like they wanted to oh, fuck yeah. OJ up, but oh, he's yeah. like OJ. Yeah, <laughs> so he can't do shit he to was, him. He was the one nigga that whites like, so you yeah, didn't that to him. No, he's the one nigga that's six something and two hundred something pounds. You're not fighting that nigga. OJ will kill you again. Well, never mind. All right, uh, Dustin. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ain't never had him on the show. All right, man. This week's dust goes <laughs> out to Burger King. <laughs> Burger King had an employee for 27 years, never missed a day, and they gifted him a gift bag with a gift card. And, I quit. Uh, Starbucks cup. And, I uh, quit. I think it was a $10 gift card. Maybe it was a $5 gift card. It was a $5 gift card to Burger King. A Plus $5 went, oh, gift fuck, card? Fuck, which I don't know how much the gift card was. Oh, I think now, that was... We don't yeah. know if this person was slow or anything like that. Or not slow, but, you know, just challenged. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even if... Burger King, that's not okay. And they still have not come out and said anything. Like, y'all just fucking trash. Y'all, y'all are trash. I really hope that story's a lie. I don't think it's a lie. And he's like employee of the week, and they got him that. I, y'all gonna get. And somebody me. just took it and was like, "Oh, this person was twenty-seven. Yeah, it's so much shit on the internet. Yeah, like, that's true. We can't really believe everything, but I feel like if that were the case, 
Burger King should clarify. Burger King should do something. They have literally they said nothing. They should do something. Because it could be some bullshit. Okay, well One then clarify. Say, say it's some bullshit. He's 52 and If you ever give me a gift card to where I make free sandwiches, that bitch. <laughs> I wish <laughs> I wish you would, nigga. I, what? Nigga, I've been getting two sandwiches with this bitch for 27 years. No, I don't think they gave him a Burger King gift card. I know they gave him a gift card. Oh, okay. I was about to. Ever- I was that's fucking trash. around. You gonna give me a gift card to spend right back here? It, it, yeah, that's. Tr- hey, companies do that shit. Have you ever worked at a company that give you money to spend money at the company you work at? I can't. <laughs> Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ikea's one. <laughs> Harris Teeth is another. Mind you, I don't mind going back. I spend money at Harris Teeth anyway, oh, yeah. so I'll take it. But. I worked at a place that sell pizza and gave their employees a pizza party from the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to cook your own pizza for the pizza, pizza. party. <laughs> <laughs> and brought it in there like, yeah. Hey. Yeah, we doing a pizza party. We just need you to cook that shit for us, bro. And yeah, bring it over here to the table. Like, what the fuck? store used to damn pizza. Oh, we lit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Person of the week, D. Uh, person of the week goes to Malika. What is her last name, Lord? Malika Andrews. Hey. She's the first black woman to host the NBA draft. So she hosted the 2022 NBA draft. Um, she bought some other sisters with her too. And yeah. I know Malika Andrews. I think she does the WNBA games. Yes. Hey. Yes. So shout out to her. Yo, I. Another one that I, I guess the second person of the week. I know y'all probably don't watch hockey awards, but did y'all see Keenan was the host? I actually did watch the. I, I was at the gym in the hockey awards zone, no, and no, I didn't see Keenan. Keenan was, the, host. was really? the host. He was the only black fucking person in. He that might like room. hockey though. He might like. Hockey. He was hockey doing a great hell. job, and I was just like, yo, that's crazy. That is crazy. Cause yeah. they they loved him. And he was gonna sell out tonight. No. <laughs> sell it out. Right here at the hockey hey, stadium. I don't know what you call James it. though, damn well, he got a host. That's if a they paid him to host the oh, damn yeah. hockey shit, he gonna, he gonna be Googling hockey names and coming up with comedy content for four weeks up into that shit. I, mean, I that am bitch interested saying though. all the wrong hockey terms. Uh, play ball, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> I am interested because there was one particular um, family that was on stage and the wife was holding the the player's face, it looks like his jaw had may, may have been broken, so in order for him to talk, she had to support his his jaw. Damn, I wonder if that's from hockey. I, oh, Jesus. She was treating him nigga like a nutcracker? No, well, no, like you could see something was wrong. So I want to thank everybody. <laughs> Show this nigga it's all like... <laughs> this is why I can't tell y'all shit. This is why I can't tell y'all shit right here. That's, I, I don't, just want to tell y'all. Before we talk, I, I don't know. I want the listeners the to let us award. know. Please Shout comment and let me know. <laughs> um, y'all really held me down. <laughs> let me know um, who that was. Oh, because I want to, I want oh, to shout, I want to shout him out, and I want to shout his wife out. Like that's a oh, that's that's teamwork. Shit. I'll find it, man. Oh. Yo, you got yeah, you right, man. James you, ain't you, shit. Your woman holds your mouth up for you when the shit falls apart. <laughs> James ain't shit. And, I, and I really hope there's nothing wrong with him. But I saw it Yo. and I couldn't oh. like my, my mind couldn't wrap while she was doing it. My but mind shout out to shit. shout out to him. Alright, y'all. Uh, that was Okay. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey man, before we get out of here, I wanted to know what would make you watch women's basketball? And if not you other one Like what would get women To watch women's basketball If they just advertise it more Honestly I I, know the truth. I see I, I, I see women's know. basketball Just by circumstances I'm I'm somewhere and it's on TV And I'm like oh shit I, I'll watch it But it's not It's not pushed on my timeline As much as it, You know regular NBA games mm-hmm. But when I had the opportunity To go out to Seattle out there, my phone picked up that there was actual game, and I wanted to go. Mm. But it's like it's it's like if I'm here, I guess where there's not a lot of support for it, because you know Seattle they support their women's NBA yeah. team. But like over here on this side, I don't really see a lot Hold of advertisement. Because when the Steam was in Charlotte, I went to a couple Steam games. That's you and though. Shits was you live. you enjoy basketball. Oh yeah. But true. for me, I would have gone had I known. Yeah. But okay. it. It ain't one of those things where it's presented to women like that. So, I hate to play the uh, sexist pig here. here no, nah, play it. But it's this uh, thing that strippers do called buns and basketball. 
And uh, <laughs> if y'all was just to incorporate that up there in the, in the WNBA, I'm pretty sure y'all get more. So more they gotta viewers. show ass. I'm not. I said I didn't want to play this role. This is just the they role gotta that show was their buns. To. Nah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. In order to get more viewership? You shouldn't. No. I honestly, I want every want fucking it. NBA player to put on gray sweats right now. Shit, they do, though. They pants tight nah. as fuck right now and they shorts tight as fuck right now. Come I on, don't man. wear nothing under. This is the most action y'all have seen in a minute. And with I need, these, like, these, uh, NBA players. A good fall weather breeze to come through. Well, now, <laughs> I, I, well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. The White Howard now. Hold on. <laughs> Man, look, the first of all, first of all if, you told, nigga. if you told oh, niggas man. to run up and down the court with no <laughs> undershorts under their basketball shorts, they would be game. Niggas don't be caring about that shit. They dick just gonna be everywhere. Like, oh, the late, oh, the late, oh, the late, don't post me up. Yeah, you gonna <laughs> <laughs> See, now we get to it. Don't yeah, post but, me though. Uh, but now, yeah, that's gonna be the weirdest thing. But now, in all, in all seriousness, it is a male dominated sport. Um, mostly men watch basketball. I was just asking what would ha- how can we make it appeal to women? I already know what's going to get the men in there. It's you have to sell the ladies and you do have to sell the sex. Now, that. do you have to that. sell the sex in a manner of them being naked on the court? No. Because I was saying this the other day, I think society has changed. Nowadays these WNBA players their their jerseys are tighter, their shorts are shorter, but off the court we can go to their Instagrams and man, Jesus, like I, I would have, you would have never seen Tina Charles in a two piece on her Instagram. She, they just didn't do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Let's just, so I think these new women have more opportunities to promote the game and they wouldn't have a problem. I think, have you seen the swimsuit cover they did? Like things like that is going to bring attention to their, to their, to their target audience, which, which, which unfortunately is, is men. Is men. Yeah. Spandex so, jerseys. What? Yeah, honestly, they don't have Spandex to. Jersey. They don't have to do anything on the floor. They don't. We don't live in that era anymore. You just have to create fans outside of the game. However, it is you do that, you do that. Bro, can but, you imagine? Like, a, whew, that'd be crazy. Yeah, I'm not watching it with a women crossover though. Yeah, like, they professionals. All right, man, this has been yeah, episode be 214. <laughs> like, it's gonna be a fool. I I'm, I'm good on spandex and women's basketball. I know I should I'm, I should stop But No I'm, like, I, I really don't want to see them wear that Like they can wear their res- regular jerseys can you like, imagine like super But now if they were stripper hoes That play basketball Then I'm with the shit no They would have to be stripper Like not real basketball players Like strippers to be Playing basketball So like what's that What's that um, football No no not actual basketball players Like act strippers Playing basketball No but I'm talking about What's the Football women play, but they got oh, yeah, yeah it'd be like that shit that Johnny watched. That uh, shit yeah, now that shit gets viewership. I know they got that shit plenty of viewership. That's what I'm telling you. But their target audience is men. And it's so That's sports. Sports target audience is mid. You gotta know your target audience. That's business. All right, episode 214. Thank you for joining us. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, man, like it. If you're feeling it, subscribe to it. You can also visit us at kickashitpod.com. You can write us there. You can get to know more about us there. You can find this podcast on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio. I think that's it. Spotify, it's Spotify. Other than that, man, I'm signing out for D. I'm signing out for James. I'm signing out for my man Jukebox, even though he's not here today. It's your boy Jumpman Jones. I want to remind you to love the life you live and the people in it. Find the positive in every situation and live in the moment because this life is not forever. We're going to talk to y'all next week, man. Jalen Ferguson. Oh, Baltimore rest Ravens. in peace to Jalen Ferguson right, of the Baltimore Ravens. Died at 26. Hey. Dad, are you on the radio?